This video is sponsored by Native. I used to love those old commercials. You know, there's no wrong way to eat a Reese's, especially that kid who would eat like a hole right through the middle of his peanut butter cup, like a true anarchist. Me, personally, I like to eat the chocolate edge first before I go into the peanut buttery center. Reese's peanut butter cups are truly the greatest candy on earth. Unless of course you have a peanut allergy. And clearly I've eaten my fair share of Reese's peanut butter cups in my life. <laughs> So how did the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup become such a legend? And more importantly, what sort of sentient chocolate horrors await you later in this video? It's time to pour yourself a tall glass of milk because this information is about to get stuck to the roof of your mouth, baby. <laughs> What's going on, chocolate costume fans? It's Dan here, back with another amazing distory about America's sweetest place on earth, Hershey Park. But first, a brief history on H.B. Reese and his peanut butter cups. H.B. Reese began working on dairy farms, including one for the Hershey Company. But after being laid off, he tried his hand at his own candy company, which ultimately failed. He went back to work for Hershey in the shipping department, where accessibility to cheap chocolate inspired him to try his candy company one more time. And lucky for H.B. Reese, it stuck. The H.B. Reese Company began making cheap chocolates and stumbled into making peanut butter cups after a local supply chain issue. He began making penny cups to be sold at local retailers, and he benefited massively from using the extremely cheap chocolate Hershey was making to undercut other chocolate companies and make a very affordable peanut butter cup that soon exploded in popularity. In 1943, after the Great Depression, the five cent cup was introduced, and every four years, the sales of the company had doubled. Whoa. People loved Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, and with his slogan, Made in Chocolate Town, so they must be good, he continued a close relationship with Hershey. After his passing in 1956, Reese left the company to six of his 16 children, who eventually merged with Hershey in the early 1960s, becoming one of Hershey's single most successful candies of all time. Now, I know you all watch my Hershey Bar costume history, so you know all of the Hershey Park lore. Like in the 1970s, the park changed from just a ride-filled company leisure amusement park into a one-of-a-kind gated theme park, and that meant adding characters. The original concept art for Reese, the sentient peanut butter cup twins, originally had them dressed separately in bows, running around, holding banners, and, and it was beautiful, but what was ultimately constructed is absolutely wild. In what can only be described as a circus sideshow act, the first Reese's Peanut Butter Cup mascot was a two-headed conjoined twin thing, both peeking out of the wrapper, seemingly overjoyed at the idea of you consuming them. There's so much wrong with this costume, more so than anything, the peanut butter cups are peeking out of the wrong side of the packaging. No one opens up a peanut butter cup from that side. What kind of lunatic opened up this thing and pulled out its two heads? God? There is no God. <laughs> Not with this thing. Where is the human body inside this costume? Does it twist into one of the cup heads? Like there's no accounting for the legs of this thing. It just has a full on pair of human legs and hips. Like it's it like, <laughs> this thing is crazy. Just it's two little faces. It's so happy. It's so weird. And I don't know, it makes me unwell. We've seen two people in a mascot before, like with Pluto at opening day of Disneyland, but have you ever seen two mascots in a person? Now at some point, the horror of two conjoined twins begging to be consumed must have caught up with guests and Hershey Park went from the double Reese cup to a single wrapped cup mascot. This guy is adorable. The same sort of stubby weird box design of the chocolate bars of the time. And honestly, I'm really impressed with the rippled edges of the cup itself. They always manage to make those look so good. This feels like one of those fun size cups you get when you're trick or treating, which is good. You like that, but let's be honest, you miss the two cups. Sure, one cup is good, but it would be better if there were two. It's like, it's like meeting a, a fun sized Hershey bar instead of meeting his full size dad. I hit up theme parks all the time. And if there's one thing that happens at theme parks, it's that you're guaranteed to get all stinky and sweaty, but not anymore. Thanks to Native, who's just launched their brand new deodorant and body spray collection. Native really stands out above the rest with obnoxiously craveable scents that are great for fighting odor 
Everything you love about stick deodorants in an ozone-friendly natural propellant spray. Each spray is light as air, easy to apply, and provides instant odor protection that doubles as an all-over fragrance spray that doesn't stain your clothes. Man, I hate it when deodorant makes my clothes a different color. Powered by air, these deodorants are made with just six ingredients. Native's products are also vegan and cruelty-free. Let's look at all the fun scents they sent me here, like sweet peach and nectar. Oh my gosh, this is my favorite one. No one can take this from me. This is my smell now. Native also sent me lilac and white tea, which is great for one of those calming, relaxing self days. You know what I mean? Empower oneself. And finally, cucumber and mint. This is the great old standby. There's nothing fresher than cucumber and mint, let me tell you. Normally, three native deodorant sprays would be $42, but if you use the link in my description and use code DisneyDan3, you can get them for $28. That's like 33% off. I did the math. So head out to your next theme park vacation smelling like a hero and not a stinker with native. 1982's E.T. had revived an entire line of chocolate, specifically Reese's Pieces, which famously replaced M&M's at the last minute in the featured film. And I'm sure 80s Spielberg UFO fans from across the land flocked to Hershey in attempts to finger bump an alien in a cornfield. So I'm assuming with all of those weirdos wandering around cornfields looking for extraterrestrials, <laughs> The Hershey Company set out to make the newest Reese costume as alien and grotesque as possible. What in the name of all things holy is going on here? Look at this giant bulbous body. Is there like a peanut butter cup shaped alien waiting to burst from this thing's chest? Why does it have no nose? And why is its mouth so duckbill like? Its eyes are bulbous and like horrific. Oh my gosh. I would have been so unhappy if I saw this thing. Not to mention, where's the cardboard backer in the packaging, all right? When I take one peanut butter cup out of the packaging, it still maintains its integrity because of the cardboard paper inside. Where is this peanut butter cup's cardboard paper? And what's going on with that peanut butter cup inside of him? Is there a face in there screaming to get out? Think of the Eldrictian horror that is being the second peanut butter cup forever entombed in, in, your, in your brother's torso. Kenny suggests that the second peanut butter cup is in there like, like the, like the twin man from Total Recall calling out to Quaid. Quaid, Quaid, do you want peanut butter and chocolate? Quaid. <laughs> so how do you even begin to follow up on such a monstrosity? Thankfully, the 90s Reese is so extremely cute. Look at this thing. It's got adorable little freckles and, and eyelashes and fun little frilly gloves and huge orange sneakers. Man, oh man, what a departure. The outside texture of the cup around the head is also changed to bring this into its more simplified cartoon design. And this marks the first time that we now have a proportionate body to cup ratio. No more weird bulbous shapes or anything like that. I now have the full size packaging of the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup at my disposal. And now I'm not necessarily worried. I don't think there's a second cup in there. I think it's just a solo cup, you know, and it, just with the, with the, with the wrapper body. I'm not, I'm not concerned. Kenny thinks there's a second cup in there. Do you? <laughs> I think the second cup like metamorphosized into its arms and legs. Like it, it was the Reese's package was the cocoon and then it liquefied its body, because I don't know if you know that's what caterpillars do inside cocoons, but they fully liquefy their bodies and then reconstruct themselves molecularly to have arms and legs. Same concept here. Now, I don't know what to think of the 2002 Reese costume. Sure, it's more accurate, like with the open packaging around the neck, that's cool, but that's about where it stops succeeding and just turns into just a strange old man. Like, it's the peanut butter cup you found from last Halloween, still in the trick-or-treat bag. Uh, you know, it's slightly off color, it's misshapen, but it's still happy to see you. And you know what, you're gonna smell it and think about it, but ultimately you don't take a bite because that would be wrong. Kenny says he eats year old Halloween candy and that disturbs me. The costume is just so thick. Like everything is just thick uh, and exaggerated. Like the nose is way too big for the face and the body is just loose bunched up fabric. Like it's wearing a moo moo or something. Honestly, perhaps my least favorite Reese's mascot costume out of everything. It feels like, like an in-between phase. Like we didn't 100% refine it, you know? This, this Reese feels like when he comes into a room, he's always asking people for money. 
you know? Yeah, and that's the problem with this, is that Reese has got money, so I don't know why he's asking for it. He's very wealthy. He's America's most popular candy. Now the modern Reese mascot, which was introduced in 2013, is sharp. Like, one amazing looking costume. Recently, the Hershey Company redid all their characters and to be more of a Pixar CGI type look, and this mascot is a gorgeous translation of that. I love meeting Reese. I've done it many times. Reese montage, Reese montage. Look at all the times I've met modern Reese. The blue eyes, I love these blue eyes. They're sharp, they, they're piercing. They remind me of my own blue peepers. Keeps doing that. And the costume's neckline is probably my favorite part. It has that signature zigzag cut of the packaging on the ends. And I love that. It's so accurate and gorgeous. And now he's wearing leather shoes, but of course he's wearing leather shoes. That's what you get for being Hershey's most popular candy. Leather shoes, leather everything, you know, whatever you want. We really know who the boss is here. It's not Hershey. Hershey walks around knighting people like he owns the place, but it's really Reese who's in charge. Now, the newest addition to the Reese's family is Cuppy. Now, Cuppy is the mascot of Reese's University, and Reese's University is a college-age marketing program aimed at kids enrolled in college and also die-hard Reese's fans. This guy has got his own marching band, website, everything. Reese is not messing around here with Cuppy. And you might be asking yourself, how do I get into Reese's University? Just go to the website and sign up. Just that easy. But this isn't an ad for Reese's. In fact, I can't get the Hershey Company to even respond to my emails. <laughs> now, I love this college mascot vibe. He's got a fun sweater, yellow pants, orange gloves. But why does this peanut butter cup look so aggressive and buff? Like, it's the first time I've ever been worried that a candy's gonna beat me up. Now, what's nice about this costume is that it offers Cuppy a ton of mobility over all of those past Reese's mascots. But that brings into question, how did this peanut butter cup gain sentience? Why does it have the body of a human? Like, it's got arms and legs and a torso. Is it possessing someone? Like some kind of alien face hugger? Not to bring it back to aliens, but Hershey kind of asked for it. They're the one who partnered with E.T. Well, there you go. There's the rich peanut buttery history of your favorite cup, Reese. Now, somebody's gotta eat all these peanut butter cups, so I'm gonna shut down the camera and see who can do that. Any volunteers? Oh, look, it's me. I'm gonna eat all these peanut butter cups. <laughs> but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put them in the freezer because only fine gentlemen with refined palates eat their candy frozen, like me, Papa Dan. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Visit me across all of the holy social media. Can he show that kid with the hole in the middle of the Reese's peanut butter cup while we talk about the holy social medias like Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, God, I love that kid. How did he even eat such a perfect hole out of the middle of the peanut butter cup? It's a mystery that to this day, I can't even figure out. <laughs> Make sure you head over to Please Stop Vlogging to check out all of Kenny and I's Hershey vlog experiences. There are very many of them. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, you rock. I guess like, did he push through the middle? <laughs> okay, I did it. It doesn't look nearly as good as his though. Maybe I should have went in from the front. <laughs>